Now in this video, we are going to be creating two new sections. So in the last one, we continued with our solo as seen here. And now we're going to be working on the cooperative, which will resemble this men little menu here. We're gonna have a option for finding a game, hosting a game, as well as a back button. And then we're going to create our the second section, which is the hosting. So that's going to contain a couple of different things such as setup match or start match, game setup. We're going to have an image for the map that we have selected. We're going to have a chat. We're not going to be doing the chat quite yet. That's going to come in the future. And we're going to have a list of players that have connected right here. So we can go ahead and get started by creating this little section. So in the editor, we're going to create a new canvas panel. Drag it into our widget switcher. I'm going to call this one CP underscore coop for cooperative. And now we need to actually kind of fill it out. So we know we're going to need a list box, I mean a uh, vertical box. So we're going to drag one of those. Going to anchor it long ways to the left. And let's see how far this goes. So that stretches just about all the way to the bottom. So we're going to zero it out for the offset on the bottom. Offset from the top, let's do 50. All right, let's do 100. Get that kind of far down. We actually did that here. So we did 160 for the top offset. Let's do that again. And we're going to do the same distance out. So offset that by 160 and go by about 350. So 160 and 350. Yep. So this is where we're going to kind of have our back button, all that stuff in it. So now we can create our buttons. Now I'm going to copy one of these buttons and drop them in because it's just a pain to do otherwise. Put in two. So the first one's going to be called find game. The second one's going to be called host game. Like so. Compile save. And we do need a back button. So I'm going to copy the back button from our solo. Right here. Gonna move it all the way down to the bottom. So the padding on the top, let's do 600. All right, make that seven. 800 is too much, so 750. All right, 760. Then from the left, we're gonna do, let's do 100, 150, 175. Uh, let's do 190. 250. All right, 220. It's good enough. All right, so that's the layout how I want this for a cooperative. Let's begin to name our buttons. So this one's going to be B underscore coop underscore find game. This one's going to be B underscore coop underscore host game. This one's going to be B underscore coop back. All right, so now we can create the events for host game. So click on that button, go to on clicked, create the event. We're going to do the same thing with the back button. So make an on clicked event, and we're going to be accessing our widget switcher. So we can just copy that, paste it back down. And when we click host game, we're going to be starting up a new section that we don't have created quite yet. So I'm just going to leave that as one temporarily for the cooperative back. We're going to leave it at zero. So we go back. Now we can test it real quick. Cooperative. All right. We have not made the button for that yet. So click on the cooperative button from our canvas panel main. Create the on clicked. 
connect it, and we're going to go to uh, 2. So I set a, the B underscore coop underscore host game. We're going to set that to 2 for now as well. Now try it. All right, click that. Host game. Pit back. Go back to the menu. And I feel like that's dropping just a little far. Yeah, I'm not happy with the, how far down this these buttons start compared to these. So we're going to line them up to be about the same. I thought that would be kind of decent. All right, so the offset from the top is 80 on this. So we're going to make our vertical box in our cooperative section be 80 as well. Which means we're going to have to lower this, give this more padding on top. So 760 plus 80, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100, 110, 20, 30, 40, so 840. And we're back down there. Let's look at it, cooperative. Right. I like that a lot more. So it's much more in line. So I'd say we're pretty much good to go on that. So now that we have that set up, we can begin working on this little widget here. So how we set our sorry, how we start the match, how we set up the match, such as these options, which we'll do later. And we're just gonna be doing pretty much this page right here for now. And yeah, once we get that done, that's gonna be the end of the video. Alright, so we're gonna do our buttons. We're gonna have an image. We're going to have our little player list. And that is all for now. Like I said, the lobby chat and stuff, that will come later. So let's make another canvas panel. Enter our widget switcher. This one's going to be cp underscore host game. Actually, I'm just going to call this one host. We'll use that as like a prefix, like we did our coop for a cooperative. All right, so we need a small list box with an image being underneath, I mean a small vertical box. I'm going to, I'm just going to keep anchoring them to the sides because I just think that works kind of well for this. So we'll do, what was it, 80 from the top. Was it 160? Then the size was 350. If I recall, now we can do an offset from the bottom. Let's do like 650, something like that. I think that's okay. Now we need to add buttons. So again, I'm just going to copy our buttons so we don't have to continually redo them. So we have our start game and our game settings. So, start game, game settings, and I'm leaving extra space here because I don't quite know what else I want to add. I'm going to actually increase that up to 750, just to give us more room, and still enough to add extra options later. And now we can go about adding our image. So we're going to drag that into the vertical box. Wait, no, we're going to do that outside of the vertical box. I want you to anchor it to the bottom left. And here's where we're going to give it some size, roughly how big we want. So let's compare it. Let's do about 600 by 600. See what that looks like. Well, we can't actually get to it. I'm going to do 600 by 600. For now, I'm going to offset it. Let's do 40. And we're going to do negative 640 to keep it square from the corner. And we're going to give this an, a name. We're going to call it I underscore host underscore map image like that. Compile save. 
I'm going to make another vertical box. Drag this one out here. Give it a rough size. I'm going to do the anchoring on the right. So let's see, we need to figure this out here. So this was 350 wide. We're going to need to go a little farther. Let's go 600. For position X, let's do negative 600 to bring it in. It should be wide enough. So that goes all the way to the right. So we're not going to have any sort of padding there. We're just going to leave it as is for a large name. We just need an Big offset from the bottom. So we want it to line up height wise the same. So offset from top is 80. We're going to match that. And we are going to let's see, that goes. I think the fourth player stops like right here. So we're going to do offset is going to be 700. That should be enough space for the names. I'm just going to add a thing of text in here temporarily. Call it player name. Just like that. And leave it. So that's roughly what it's going to look like for now. Let's set it up so we can actually go to it. So when our. I'm going to move this coop button event up. So when we click from the main, I want to move it up because that's what it's referencing. So to where our, there's our solo button, there's our solo back. I want to put it with our cooperative button. Like so. All right, so now when we click on host game, we're going to set this widget to 3 because we go 0, 1, 2, 3. So we should be on host, cooperative, host, and here we are. So that image could be quite a bit smaller, actually. That's pretty big. Let's scale it down. Let's do. Nope, that's position. 550 by 550. We're going to do negative 550. All right, plus 40, so 590. Keep it even. I think that's a little better. We might go smaller in the future, but right now it's just kind of getting just getting everything set up right. So I want to kind of do a quick explanation on what's going to happen when we actually go about clicking this host game button and the functionality behind it. So what the plan is, is we're going to be introducing online beacons and we'll press the host game button. We're going to create our, our host beacon and this is going to kind of, as well as we're going to be advertising on a database that we're going to be creating. So we're going to be creating a web API along that's going to be interacting with a database that holds a list of current servers. So for example, let's assume there's servers up, I hope. Which of course there isn't. But when we go to host the game, we are going to be sending that our server information to the web API. The web API is going to then verify it and do all that kind of stuff. And if it's good, we're going to add it to the database. And from there, when we want to find servers, we're going to be saying, asking the web API, hey, we want to get a list of servers from our database. So we're going to retrieve all those servers and it's going to be sent back to us. Now, as we loop through each of the servers, we're going to be using the online beacons to ping them so we can get a rough ping so we know you know how good is our connection going to be to the server and stuff like that and we can filter out based on that because it's literally a live ping and when we find one that we want to join when we press the join button we are going to be using that online beacon to do a little 
a temporary connection to the actual server well the server host it's not going to be like a full-on like client travel it's just going to be a little connection and what we can do with online beacons is they work the same with normal RPCs and replicated variables so for example I could replicate the game settings and that would include like our map so I could create an on rep event for the structure that I have for the server information like like I said the map and whenever I make a change as the host I click game settings I change the map to something else that on rep event is going to fire and any client that is connected to that currently has that beacon as the connection they will that on rep event is going to fire on their machine just like it would in a normal game meaning they will see assuming we set it up right they will see the map image change to whatever map we have selected live so that's going to be the same thing for when players join we're going to have a replicated game state and that kind of stuff to where when a player joins we can just get a live retrieval of the current connected players and we can get access to their player states and just list all the players out in this little drop or this little vertical box here and again that's how the chat's going to work kind of as well using rpcs so uh, we will be getting into that actually quite soon i want to do just a couple more small things first regarding the ui and then we should be jumping right into it so there might be one or two videos after this before we actually dive into the online beacons so this video is now up and i will see you in the next one i'm not sure what i'm going to do yet but i'll see you then